participation. All right, so I, I just started the webinar. It's 3.05 on my clock and it's being recorded. So I don't, you know, there are no attendees yet, but there may be. So that's there's, why there's I would- There's our vice chair, that's Carmen. There's our vice chair. Oh, Maybe she see. could run the meeting today and then we could choose a chair sure. for the next meeting. If she's the vice chair, sure, I wasn't sure that she was, so that's great if- Oh, good. Hi, Karen. You're muted. Hi. Uh, did I miss something? No, nope, oh, you just. So we were saying that, um, hi, Karen, that I guess that you're vice chair. So, you know, uh, Carrie has resigned. So as vice chair, you'll have to run the meeting today. And then um, at the next meeting or for today, we can decide on having either a temporary chair or a new chair. But, you know, there is no chair right now. So the, the oh. vice chair now serves as yeah. chair. Nate, just, could you could you take over a lot of the things that you read as a uh, chair because I'm here totally without any of those things that are always read. I'm kind of stumped or I mean, you can coach me through it. You're in Hawaii, right? I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> My hair is wet from swimming in the ocean. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I think most of it is just announcing that the hearings are, so we have, it's 3.06, we have four minutes before we, have, we can open a hearing. It's just announcing that we're opening these hearings. <clears throat> I can share the screen and just reading the legal ad, you know, saying that it's being held over Zoom and, you know, public participation is held remotely. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, that's pretty sufficient. Um, and then just asking, you know, applicants to make their presentation and then, you know, just manage the comments. Right now, there's only one attendee in the meeting. Um, and so we have to wait for uh, 310. So just for everyone to know, you know, that, um, right, there's two public hearings today and then the public meeting will continue with discussion of the expansion of the district um, and any other unanticipated topics, but. Uh, that's that's the agenda for today. And I think election of officers, if we, and that can also be scheduled for next time as well. So I think that's something that needs to be on the agenda for future meeting. Agreed. <clears throat> so Nate, if you, you bring up your screen, Karen is then able to read the uh, Perform the perform the formal function as says as Karen. Yes. That's yeah. good with you. That would be great. All right, and I can share. I'll see. Yeah, I can share my screen, so I have all the material downloaded for the applications, and I can walk through that or the applicant can if they, um, they need yeah, thank to. Thank you. I guess we have two minutes to uh, to wait, just in case there's anyone else who mm. read the legal ad and. So Nick, what's the date of that photograph that you've got behind you of the town hall? Oh, Since good we've question. Got two minutes. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I don't know exactly. Um, it probably has it actually on the where my name is covering it, but um, yeah. yeah, it's well. There's this horse. There's there's carts in the uh, on the on the left hand side there of Main Street. Right, and the entrance so hasn't changed. Yeah, so it's. Uh, it's it looks uh, it looks old. It does. I yeah. This has been my background for a while, so you don't have to see my bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I've, Town uh, Hall was built in the eighteen eighties. Yeah, eight, yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 I, I see this is you know. And there's. No, I feel uh, like they changed, yeah, they added yeah. the the right in the corner here. They added the um, they changed the landing for the William uh, Smith statue, and so this that happened shortly after. So this looks like it could be before that. So. Um, you know. Oh, yeah. Really, really right, right at the corner, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. You see, there's one hand, Chris. You can, uh, you're, you can unmute yourself. You, you can speak. You have to. Un I can unmute you. Oh. Yeah. But Chris, you um, you're you're an attendee twice. So I don't know if you're on a phone and a computer, but there's a really bad echo. 
can't you weren't really audible hi i'm still there as an attendee as one screen all right so it's 310 i can share my screen and we can, i'll pull up the the um i'll lower my hand where's my share screen oh that's funny there um yeah if you you can just read the legal ad corinne um if that's visible um, oh, let's see. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. So it's 310 and I'm opening the meeting for the Local Historic um, Commission, Lincoln Sunset Local Historic Commission in, accord in accordance with MGI chapter 40C and the general bylaws of the town of Amherst the commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023 at 310 to consider the following applications for a certificate of appropriateness. The public hearing will be conducted virtually. Um, yeah. By Zoom. Uh, yeah, by Zoom. To join the meeting via telephone, uh, it's, um, or you, or you can join virtually by telephone and enter the webinar ID when prompted. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. So these are the following. 117 Amity Street, Donald Fisher and Susan Haas request to demolish attached one car garage and replace with a new garage that is wider, has new doors, siding, windows, trim, and a dormered roof in back and in front. Uh, secondly, um, Main Street 14B to 28 Uwen Chen requests to remove the transom and picture window and replace with new windows. Um, yeah, so. I, I know one thing. We'll yeah, thanks, Corinne. I know Chris uh, from um, is here representing 117 Amity Street. So I'm going to promote Chris to you do a panelist so that allows you to speak freely and then also share your screen if you'd like. Participation. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. You. Okay. Am I am I visible? No. No. There we go. That that, that should be it. Yeah, I can see. Okay. What can I help you with? Well, can you describe the project on one seventeen Amity Street? So we, you know, usually we ask the applicant to make a presentation and describe what's, you know, what's changing. We do, oh, have, the, oh. we do have the plan set. Um, oh, okay, that was my next question. If you have all the information in front of you. The, uh, we are uh, basically making the garage that is existing, tearing it all out and making it three feet wider. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, has a broken up slab. It probably has a 1927 foundation. It's not uh, up to current code. So uh, we're putting in a new foundation, foundation wall and new slab. And then a uh, it's called the bonus room up above. It's basically like a yoga room, an exercise room. And it ha connects to their bedroom. And it has a, a balcony on the side with the egress door. <laughs> a new new garage new garage doors uh, uh pretty much it uh, a new door two new doors for uh one going out onto the uh, balcony and one at the ground level on the side there's uh two dormers one facing the front and one facing the rear uh the rear has two windows 
And if you don't have it on your copy, there's been a third one added to the front. It, that dormer itself goes all the way to the left up against the house instead of a space between mm -hmm. the two. Uh, on the front or just or front and back? Or just on the front, yeah. yeah. They wanted yeah. to have more light yeah. and it's on the front. The, uh, the front drawing shows, I think you have it up here, it shows it's going, it's got the three small windows in it. Right and the rear drawing has two in the back. Okay. So the, uh, this is Bruce Coldham. So the, what we're looking at now is what you intend. Right, this is proposed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, the, and what has, what is not on that plan is on the upper right hand corner, the gable end. Uh, right, replacing, that, these, replacing these windows. Yes, that bank of windows, the big one in the middle is now a man door. It has a 42, right, there it is, a 42 by 10 foot, uh, just a, a, a deck, a setting deck, and then two other small windows beside it. Okay. And that's just, just merely for them to, as they're exercising, sit outside and, and another means of egress out on that end of the building. So I think I saw Haydenville woodworking on one drawing and Kuhn Riddle on the first. So I gather then that this is a, a, a subsequent uh, um, feature that has been proposed by the uh, contractor. Yes, yes. That would be us, yes. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we we uh, we are the contractor. We were uh, we proposed that because they were still wanting more light, and they were just out of room to put more light other than that mm -hmm. gable. And yeah. uh, then I requested uh, <clears throat> information on the windows from Pella. Are they actually egress windows? And no, they were not. And so that's why the door came into the side with a balcony for an egress for a secondary means of egress because it is on the second floor yeah. on the far end uh, uh, the stairway is in the middle of the house but so it, it's it's put itself quite within a reasonable distance of requiring a secondary means of egress as a as a bedroom the, the added doorway is merely a a, a a, I hope that I don't have any trouble with egress. Yeah. Because my windows are not. Okay. Yeah. So here's, you know, the, just let the commission know this prop, this property is, you know, here's a, a diagram showing the existing garage, will, which will be demolished. It's also within the rear setback. So it's also going to the zoning board of appeals or has been to have this, to allow this to happen. Uh, so it's, you know, it has this approval and then uh, there's a demolition request for the, as well for the historical commission and then zoning board of appeals approval required. Yeah. And so here's the plans okay. that were submitted showing, you know, the wider garage. Um, yeah. You know, new footprint. And then, you know, this is the interior layout. Um, yeah. And that keeps going down. So here's... Uh, existing mm -hmm. for everyone to see and just you know there's, there's some transom windows you know the garage door here and then the proposed is uh we'll keep scrolling down here we'll just get to um yeah this is without the without yeah, the, that's, um, that's the yeah that's your proposed floor plan yeah upstairs uh, yeah mm -hmm. and there's your exterior views Oh, I and see. currently, it has uh, the siding, the only portion of this garage in the existing state it has a uh, clabbered siding, horizontal clabbered siding on the gable and the, what would be the back side of the house. Uh, yes, here's, yeah, here's uh, otherwise, the front is all cedar shakes. And everything else on the front is cedar shakes. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I had more pictures uh, downloaded. 
So here's existing, right? Yeah. Yep. And the balcony is going to be on the side or on the back side. Yep. Uh, as, uh, as you're looking at that photo right there, it's on the right hand side. Okay, that's right. Okay. okay. And here's the back of the house, just showing, you know, here's where the back of the garage now. Yes. And that dormer shape, that is the addition, the what they call in the uh, half a half a floor, I think is what it was called in the last remodel mm -hmm. data of that was when that was done, uh, I think it was 78, I think they said or something. Right, which is behind here, this front entry. So that's, this yeah. is not, this is not changing. No, no, only, only right above the garage doors themselves. Yeah. No, nothing, no other portion of the house is changing, just the garage footprint and the, the size of the uh, dormers yeah. on the front. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, and, and then the the uh, windows that are in that photo that are on the house side of the garage door, those were just re recently replaced by us uh, about three years ago, I think. We mm -hmm. we ended up getting approval for you guys, mm -hmm. um, and I think it was during right. It was before COVID. We had to wait for a September meeting, and we got approval for those. They're the same series and same style. That was put in before. I thought I recognized this. Yeah, this that, right. This came in twenty. Was it twenty twenty? Maybe in two thousand nineteen. It was here. Um, so here are the plans again. I'm just going to go all the way to the. Um, you know, I think this is a nice view of the garage. It's being removed, and then here, you know, this first page has the. Um, geez, where is that? Now is it? Um, the revised plan set. There's too many plans here. Too many. <laughs> and so, you know, for the commission, it's you know, it's basically a whole new construction of the garage. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, with yeah. you know the dormers with everything, and so, uh, and now the uh, side balcony and deck. And so, if that's something, you know, you know it looks like materials. We'll be matching right mm -hmm. the roofs line line up. Um, this is visible mm -hmm. from North Prospect Street and Amity Street, you know, through side properties. It's not, you know, on this directly on the street, but mm. that's what I thought. So this is yeah, the it, yeah, all the pitches are going to be the same so that it, it's all basically a well, like you can see in this, the the stepping of the existing dormers versus the new dormer, everything's a everything's a match. So that the and same style on the 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 awning windows that are going in on the front of the garage and the rear, they match the ones just to the left of it as well. So, uh, so this is the yeah. drawing that really we uh, concentrate on because this is the uh, the revised and current uh, proposed mm -hmm. drawing. So this and the uh, and the and the uh, three dimensional. Uh, rendering of the uh, balcony are the two drawings that are probably the ones that we focus our attention on. Is mm -hmm. that yes. that's correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, so, and, uh, and will there be originally no everybody thought that we were only just doing a three foot addition to the garage, and I was just like, no, we're putting all new footings everywhere underneath that garage, and it's coming completely out. So, because it's definitely on uh, subpar foundation. Yeah. And then, and then uh, uh, will there no, be no transom windows above the garage door now or no banding at, at all? Or is it just going to be? Yeah, as you can see in the existing photos of the house, they're never there. Uh, the architect put the band in there. And I really don't know why, because there's not a band anywhere on the house, not all the way around the house. There's not a band anywhere. Uh, the only thing that would mimic the band would be the horizontal line on the front porch on the side view. Right. 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 Yeah.
Well, and they and that was a any... correction. That was a correction on our part just before we before we sent this all off because we noticed that she had that on there. And so wait a minute, there's not any there mm -hmm. anywhere else. Right. We can walk through this. Yeah, this has everything that's happening. Um, you know, this is interior. You know, this is just labeling. Yeah. Um, the commission doesn't really necessarily look at the interior. So I think, as Bruce mentioned, I think this is a you know an important page to look at. The rest of it doesn't seem to, you know, we don't care or we have no jurisdiction over the interior. The uh, the site plan is important, of course, to the zoning board. Uh, um, but uh, um, the, the second uh, egress, that, that balcony, is, is that legal? If you have a second egress, you don't have to have stairs that go all the way to the bottom. You just need a door to the outside. <laughs> It's not technically right. a second egress. Because, because you a, have the, 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 uh, and the same thing on a, a, a three-story house. As long as you got that egress window, you can use a, you have a rope ladder you can throw right out the window mm -hmm. that hooks to the side of the windowsill itself. Um, they use those as well here in Northampton anyway. This is, this is technically a, what's known as an emergency escape. That's, uh, people call them egress windows and egress has got a higher um uh standard of that uh, in in the code terminology so in the building code i believe and certainly that's the way it used to be when i was active they were called emergency escapes and that meant that you yeah. had to have a window big enough you know for certain things to happen but it didn't require any uh stairways or anything of that associated with it, it was simply a, 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 a an opening that's big enough for, to get in or out um, to jump and, out the window yeah, to get out of the fire, and it's uh, it's only required if it's a bedroom. And so, uh, if this was um, if this was accepted by the jurisdiction as not being a bedroom, then uh, technically you wouldn't need it because it's only a requirement for bedrooms. But I guess it's what true. you're doing is is making it possible for it to be a bedroom without uh, people yeah. having to, you know, be uh, yeah. And what I've ran into it, plus it's got closets in it, two closets, small little closet, or one now. Uh, the uh, uh, with an issue that I had in another town up in Colerain area, the uh, there's pretty much if there was enough square footage to fit the building code, and you were able to lay your head on it, and there was a door in that room, then it could be considered a bedroom. Yep. Uh, so it's more or less the door is more or less a way to protect the customer in the future or anybody else who ever buys the house in the future from uh, doing anything more with that room itself. It's a prudent move. Great. Thank you. To Grin's comment, I guess, though, you know, if uh, have you spoken with the building inspectors or commissioner about this in terms of what they would require or? Not yet. So, you know, if this, you know, if the commission approves this now and then the building inspection services in the town says, wow, you know, this deck needs to be a different dimension or something, depending on how big of a change it may be, then it might need to come back to this commission for review. So, you know, minor changes and substantial changes, um, you know, are fine. But if they, you know, say, you know, if they think there needs to be a stair here and somehow that can't be resolved and they want you to have an exterior stair stairwell then that would you know that would need to come back before the mm -hmm. local historic district commission hi i'm I'm right. the, i own the business i uh i i have submitted this in for a uh, building permit and i have had a couple of uh interactions with david cody who has not mentioned anything about um any concerns over not having a stairway great yeah, yeah. The uh, support brackets look a little small. Um, uh, yeah, that's just a drawing. They're uh, they're going to be red iron. Oh, okay. the red iron angle. They, so they, they look they're not they a look spindly, four by even four. If, yeah, even if they could be uh, supported. Uh, I would <laughs> I would typically uh, put in something that was bigger just to make it look um, solid. 
but that again is probably beyond our purview. Um, if I were doing it, I would use a, um, a probably a, a six by three, and I may even scallop the inside just to give it some elegance. But certainly, I would use something that was a really solid uh, couple of pieces of wood so that it looked like it was meant to stay up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 uh, uh, is like I said. That's more along the lines of like you're picking uh, the as far as it's it, it's a it's a supporting device I should say it this way it matters not to me it matters to you guys more than it does to me uh, if you want to see a piece of wood there we can certainly do a, a piece of wood there versus some angle iron well, I imagine the angle iron is, well, there's going to be a horizontal component uh, to, to this uh, push uh, because there's an overturning uh, moment for this cantilevered uh, deck, which is going to put a mm -hmm. horizontal thrust onto the wall of the garage. And so uh, the building inspector will, should be interested in whether that garage, is it a two by six wall for the garage or is it a two by four wall? It's a two by four wall, but it'll be tied to the, uh the rim joists with the uh i do believe they're they're, they're I, it's on the print here they're 12 yeah it's attached to the rim joists on the outside well, and again this is this is then, this is not our concern probably, they'll probably have me do uh the tie back also like you traditionally have to do if you're going to go up with a roof over the thing you have to or even if it's more than a foot off the ground, you got to tie it back to the house, not yeah. just with your lag bolts. But it's a special anchor, Simpson, a Simpson tie that you tie it back with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll do it. To keep to keep it from pulling away from the house, I think is what your concern is. Uh, yes, and, and again, this these are I, I should shut up because the, uh, this is just me looking at this, thinking, goodness, um, and, well, and 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 I we don't have. Uh, any jurisdiction or so. Um, so this is for the building inspector and user to sort out. No, I mean, I, I yeah. think so it does get to the point where if, if, you know, the inspector was like, oh, I'd want to see like a ledger here or something. And all of a sudden the siding gets, needs to get changed and the appearance of the side of the garage changes because of the way the balcony needs to get fastened. Then, you know, that, you know, because what the commission is looking at is what is being presented, right? So if somehow yeah. that changes significantly that, um, we'll definitely have to come back to you guys. <laughs> My guess is, Nate, that, that it would change. Perhaps there would be a vertical uh, uh, landing piece, right. uh, which would be uh, from your hand up to the underside of the, right. and then on both sides, uh, and that would be the, uh, that would be the 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 the, um, the thing to which you would anchor the strut, because otherwise the strut is going through the finished siding and it wouldn't. Uh, so my guess is oh. that we should approve this, assuming that there will be some additional um, member visible from the street there. And then right. uh, oh. then they don't have to come back. Most certainly, they're going to have to be a uh, almost even more than a, a, a king stud and a jack. There's going to have to be probably three full length studs in the area where those come where they return the braces return back to the house uh, yes, so that there's no lateral push that's there right. will, it, it, it will be in two framing it won't be just over the plywood yes I, I we appreciate I appreciate that but that's a that's not something we're looking at but from the so we're thinking the, that there might be need to be uh you know like a basically another plate here there will be a surface a, piece i think because i don't think you will take that that structural member straight through the siding because it would be too much movement you'd get leakage and so forth so my guess is that there will be a vertical member that will allow that strut to attach in some fashion that will then be able to be sealed against the siding without uh, creating yeah. an opportunity for leakage so so all i'm saying yeah. is that we should as we are looking at this assume that there or understand that there would be a, another vertical member on either side of, uh, of, of, of that stud. And if we, if right, we be, recognize right. that and approve it, then you don't have to come back. Right, so yeah. could there's something like Yes, that's, that's uh, 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 that will be, yeah, I'm sure, what yeah. will happen. Right, but yeah, I agree like with that. you completely. There will be a vertical members in there. 
Otherwise, uh, I, I, yeah, this thing will go, it will go through the side of the wall uh, without any type of good framing in behind where those braces are. Yeah, they'll be framing uh, so, and they'll, those, those surface pieces will be the, uh, allow the, uh, the siding to be waterproof against yes, the side uh, of those uh, verticals. Yeah, and what we, I would do, uh, it, it would be called what, simply like you would do at the top of the stairs inside the house would be a rosette it would be a block that's already got the drip cap on the block and then the four by four mounts the bracket itself mounts to that piece so that it's all uh flashed in with the with the rest of the siding yeah and then materials for this balcony is this all uh wood that would be painted or stained to match the house or what is the what is the material for this it it is going to be the pressure treated just because it's up in the air far enough uh, i i don't want i can use i can code wise i can use regular dimensional lumber but i don't like doing that for a deck because it's just got too much water so it's going to be pressure treated and then at the time when the pressure treat becomes uh dry enough to be painted then it will be painted the rest of the blend of the color with the house the uh, railings will be white as the rest of the house as well. Yeah. Did, did railings, that answer your the railings, question? The railings will be wood though. They're not, this isn't gonna be a synthetic. Uh, the jacking itself will probably be synthetic. Right, but the, that's not really visible, but what's visible will be, like you said, pressure treated uh, wood. Right. Railings, posts, all that. Yes. And from the bottom side, that can all be painted if if that's necessary to to uh, uh, blend it with the rest of the house. We we plan to make it look the same as the railing that goes along the front porch that's uh, mm -hmm. adjacent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me, um... Sorry for all the scrolling. We can. Uh... Oh, it's hard to see that yeah the existing photo yeah yeah all right yeah and i think that existing railing is is one of those that is the uh, historical one that is probably not at if it was 30 inches off the ground it's probably right. not at 36 so mm -hmm. but that being said you're not getting a short railing to match that on the balcony and i have to put that at the minimum of 30 34 38 is where i'm going to end up landing on that one right for code and so the just since you brought that up the existing um this is visible you know they're they're narrow it's a narrow gap between the two but in the in the drawings for the balcony it looks like you had a larger spacing is it going to be something similar to match that so it looks like a we you know. we do plan to match the the, the front porch, I just didn't draw in all of the, the posts. Right, okay. Okay, so. <coughs> Karen, I don't have any further questions, I don't think. And the, the lights, is it gonna match what's there? So there was, um, let me go back, there's a light fixture here and is it gonna be the same as the one that's on the side of the house? Yes, the, all of the, uh, I'm sorry, what? We're not taking that one off, it's on the side of the house. Right, but you're proposing yeah, two, you're proposing two on the new garage and I was just curious to know if it would match this style. As, as closely as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a uh, the coach light is on the exterior on the the uh, the one side yeah. where the where the man door is. There's a going into the side of the garage. There's a light on the side of that. But right, yes, so yeah, they will be matched. Yeah, it looks like there's a light here, you know, on the side of the garage, and then I guess there's going to be another one over on this side. 
Right. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm looking at my phone. It's pretty small. Uh, so, but right there by the on the gable wall where the the uh, pr the balcony is, mm -hmm. that there will be a light there, and there's going to be a. I think there's a light at the top. Do we have a light up there, Zinnia, on the gable by the balcony? The we, building we, inspector will probably require that you do. Yeah, we're going to need a, a light at both both the uh, new doors and then I believe the, the um, yes, right there. Um, yeah. yeah, so it looks like you're in, right, there'll be, um, I'm just going to annotate this. So it looks like you're going to have a, a, there'll be a light fixture here, probably right above each door, and then there's going to be one here based on the plans, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, on the porch, on the, the 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 balcony, it would be on the far right of the windows. Oh, you, uh, you'd have. Be, yeah, because your one on the door below the balcony would be on the corner. Okay. One door would be directly underneath the deck. So the other one would be on the right hand side of the door, the right hand window of the door on the balcony. Right hand. So, do I a, am I on the wrong side then? Uh, I'm like I said, uh, Zinnia, you can help me out. I'm looking at my phone. It's kind of small. I, sometimes I don't pick up your cursor, but right. on the side door of the garage, there's going to be a light there. We have to to code. Right. And on the door up. On I guess the question is, are the light you know, the one on the side here? Is it going to be here or not centered? And then there'll be another one because none of this is shown on the plan. So. Uh, yeah, I don't. Um, I don't think we had a, a clear idea of exactly where the light was going to go. Um, but I, I think that it makes the most sense to put the um, the light for the balcony above the middle. Chris, is that okay? I I think it would look better yeah. in the middle. Yeah, that, um, yeah, and it then would look better in the middle. And then the one um, at the at the side man door mm -hmm. on on this on the side. Uh, at the corner yeah right there yeah. um and then uh, you know the uh, the other one would be so we yeah. would, would actually be putting three on the other right. one would be there next to the garage to to give uh the two side look um yeah. with the, the one that's existing sure all right yeah it looks like it was actually about level with the garage so right they'd be these would be a little lower those but yeah all right mm -hmm. is that clear for everyone so these two i was just gonna Dom, and again, would be more, you know, would be probably more like about here based on the drawing. So three new lantern fixtures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see your red circles now. Yeah. Yeah, I just deleted them. All right, now it's good. The power of Zoom that you can. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't know that. Uh, we, we'd be doing this for weeks if we had to do it with paper and pencil. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Karen, should I move? Uh, the, yes, please the, do. Uh, please do. Uh, then, uh, there still can be discussion, but at least that'll move it along. Uh, so okay. I move uh, that we. Uh, Grant a certificate of appropriateness for the project at uh, what's the address again? Uh, I don't have it up, but uh, 117 Amity. 117 Amity um, uh, to uh, uh, do the work as set out uh, in the documentation submitted uh, by Kieran Riddle Architects and by Haydenville uh, and with additional um, documentation by Haydenville Woodworking. Um, with uh, um, finding that it's consistent with uh, sections 8.1 and 8. Point whatever three, I think of uh, for the um, the, the sunset uh, Lincoln Sunset Historic District. Um, I don't have my wording in front of me, but I uh, <coughs> I typically do that and. Uh, and, and I don't think there's any conditions other than that the uh, that the uh, 
to the new to propose new balcony at the gable end of the uh, of the extended garage be uh, uh, executed to match exactly the existing uh, balustrade on the on the front corner of the house. So that is the motion. Yeah. Do we have a second? Second, Rita. Thank you for seconding. Uh, second. Do we have any more discussion, or should we go for a vote? Does anyone have anything to add? Okay, then do we have to call this by name, Nate? Yeah, a roll call vote, right? Roll so call vote. Okay, uh, Bruce? Uh, yes, I approve. Steve? Yes. Um, Greta? Yes, I approve. Nancy? Yes, I approve. Is it Heather? No, wait. <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> Nicole. Nicole, I'm sorry, Nicole. That's right. Yes, I approve. And I, Karen Winter, also approve. So I guess it's unanimous and uh, you will receive this. Uh, Nate, why don't you say what has to be done? Sure. Yeah, no, I, I can, um, you know, just through our permitting, we'll, I'll, you know, coordinate with Jen Mullins, a permit administrator, and you can receive, you'll receive something I'll probably later this week, it has to be, you know, filed with the town clerk, but, um, you know, this can, you know, this will go through the process now. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Happy New Year. Happy this New Year. Year. And happy New Year to you too. This wasn't as painful as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can uh, come back. It's a beautiful <laughs> house. I love that house. Yeah, I think it. Everybody lovely. does. It's a great, it's a nice house. Uh, I, I was just looking at the current plot plan and trying to, I noticed that it said that it used to be a barn and I was trying to figure out where the existing, the old existing structures were when it was a barn. It looked like it could have, the they, the notes I found said that maybe it was, the part of the original house was converted, the barn may have been converted in the 20s, 1920s. Yeah. But um, the foot, it's hard to line up footprints based on old maps, so I can't tell exactly. Um, yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much. Yep. Good luck. You guys have a thank great you. day. So now we move on. Yes. Um, to the second. Uh, Nate, please take over. Sure. And I don't think that um, anyone is here representing 319, 321 Main Street. So uh, the contractor emailed me today or last week and asked when this was, I emailed today, they were notified back when the legal ad was sent out. Um, so I'm not sure, um, you know, it doesn't seem like there is anyone here to speak to that application. So um, I, can, I can do that. The, um, you know, so at 319, 320 Main Street, they're proposing to change two, two windows um, <laughs> let me just share my screen here. I think this is probably a, uh -huh. um, a better view. So it's just the, these two windows under stakeholders capital that are proposing to replace, uh, you know, this was considered the transom, these, you know, long band right here, and then the windows below it. And so the, the windows above, they're proposing to replace them uh, and keep it the same. So, you know, uh, okay. two by two, oh, you know, two over or whatever in the rows uh, with the thick banding here. And that'll be, would actually be exempt from review because it would be uh, change of material, but otherwise it'd be the same. Here's a better view. It'd be the same detail and everything. Um, for this larger window, they've proposed either replace it as one large single pane or, um, you know, uh, a window with four instead of three rows, you know, a grill pattern with three tall, have four tall and a smaller grill pattern throughout the whole window. And so really it's this bay, you know, the, whatever you want to call it, bay window, picture window, you know, it's the changing this um, that is part of the review. You know, they, they've mentioned that the door is remaining and that if any trim needs to be replaced as part of this process, they would just replace it and paint it black. So it'd be just replacing in kind 
as part of the normal window replacement process. Um, you know, this image of the front of the building shows that over time there has been changes to the windows <laughs> uh, along Main Street. So, you know, larger glass and then still some of the smaller pane glass. And then, you know, the one that the one that they're doing is on the end here. Um, Karen? Yes, uh, Bruce? I should, uh, I, I think the applicant here is, um, uh, maybe I'll ask Nate. Nate, can you confirm who the applicant actually is? Yeah, so it's both, you know, it looks like it's Cayman's Realty on behalf of the owner. So it's Bay State Windows and Cayman's Realty on behalf of Wu and Chen. Okay, uh, I, I, because there's a disclosure potentially, I, I, um, the uh, stakeholders capital uh, is run by Andrew Bellick and Susan Bellick. They are friends of mine and we, uh, uh, my wife and I have them uh, retained as our financial advisors. And so they're really a tenant. So I, I just disclosed that. I, I don't think it affects my ability to be uh, impartial and so forth, but uh, oh sure, thanks. Yeah, probably, no, should, probably, not, should, probably should know that. Um, right. They're not named on any of the application or paperwork, so it's really right. the property manager and owner that are. Doing and this. I think stakeholders is is spent is spelled more like you might if it was a barbecue establishment than a. But in the application, I mean, and so oh, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. Uh, no, maybe it was like a proofreading or uh, autocorrect there. It's something, but anyway, I, when I read it, I didn't re realize that it was the same. But for a moment, because I thought there was another establishment. Right, and so the quotes that they received for you know the transom window match, right? They have the thicker band and the uh, and the offset with the two. It's really this larger window they were proposing, you know, this, um, you know, this four over, you know, whatever it is. Um, so we don't have a picture of what they're actually proposing. We simply have a, 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 a description. This quote sheet. So I don't know if this is visible. Can um, you, can you put it up? I thought, um, it says I'm screen sharing. I'm not sure what, what exactly am I? You've got the, uh, You've got the, the PDF of the three or four images of the front of the building. Photos. All right. How about, is this, is this better now? That's, yes. That's yeah. It. Oh, okay. that's the, yeah, you can see it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. This is, I see stakeholders now. So yeah. So for the larger window, they're proposing either four, you know, two, four, six, eight, you know, eight over four, or um, just a clear pane like this. And so, you know, what, what's there is, you know, something that's slightly different, right? So it's, um, two, four, six, they're keeping the eight, but instead of eight, eight over three, it's eight over four or clear. And their preference is to have a clear pane, you know, no grill pattern. Yeah. Which is similar to the dance, uh, to the hope and feathers at the other end, I think. Is, is that correct? It is. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess for this purposes of this, uh, if we were comfortable with either of the two proposed, uh, um, one with the grills and one without, and if right. we were comfortable with either, then they could uh, they could choose. Yeah, I yeah. think the, the one yeah. above. Sorry, the one above. I think they'll always have the grills above, yeah. and then it's really the big picture window would be the one that either has some or has none. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's I, not I, just the hope and feathers. The center also had put in some big, like right next to it. Right. Um, I, I agree that I think it would be prudent for us to leave the decision to those uh, people that are, are going to be completely involved because I think either of them um, would probably work and they're going to be working with the contractors and they're in a better position to see what is more energy efficient. And I think um, ultimately they care also how to make it the most impactful. So I would give them the option, I agree. Will it be painted black like it is now? Yes. Seems fine to like, me. So I think in this instance, you could you know, recommend that it be black. I, you know, if you want to say either or, that's fine. But I think, I mean, I, I think uh, um, typically the commission doesn't leave that 
<laughs> you know, decision up to the contractor or owner, usually the commission will say, you know, one or the other. Um, so I just want to make sure that if you're, you know, if, if either one is fine, that's, um, that's okay, I guess. I just, typically we don't leave that choice. Um, it's true, but, uh, but it, when, uh, this picture that we're looking at, Nate, is a good one because either or, uh, if you've got the, the, the down center, Right. Uh, is 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 one pattern and the open feathers is another so uh the two proposed uh windows one with grills and one without is, fits with the existing pattern it's just a question of which right. it's uh it's going with so i uh, and in the absence of the applicant to ask them what their preference is um okay. i th i think we would either, uh, if we if we had a preference, it would be easy. Be easy. Uh, I don't particularly, but that doesn't mean that others may not. But if we don't have a preference, I don't see uh, a problem, uh, albeit that we don't typically do that. Uh, right. I don't I see a problem. I think the applicant with, uh, had a preference of it being open. Yes. Did it say that? It did, yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. We can't, was, we're not allowed to make a preference. We can't uh, state a preference. Is oh, yeah. Can, oh, no, we can. I, I was saying that. Um, you know, I don't know, it was Bruce or Corinne said, oh, we could be either one. We could allow the, the applicant to either put the grills in, you know, the, you know, they, on the quote sheet that they provided, it was, you know, either, you know, uh, an eight over four or a clear pane, you know, without any. Yeah, I just think that the, the, first of all, the, the windows and hope and feathers were probably put in before there was an LHD there, I would think, right? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so to me, so. the grill, the grill is much more period. And also, you know, I can see why there would be a plate window for open feathers, because it's a framing shop. But um, my, my preference uh, would be to have a grill, if we're and, allowed to state a preference. And would you, right now it's eight over three with, I mean, it looks like at one point, somehow they, it looks like it was, um, you know, removed a little bit the, uh, yeah. the, you know, this grill here. So, you know, what, you know, Rob Mora, the building commissioner, I said, if they were mimicking this pattern, you know, if this were eight over three, then it could be exempt from review, even if they're changing materials, because that's allowed, mm -hmm. but you know, they're doing eight over four. So the, you know, the size of the grill would be, would be slightly different. And so really that, you know, that becomes, you know, here's clear or here's, you know, here's this pattern here, which is slightly smaller. It actually looks like that this new eight over four is to match. Uh, sorry to keep bouncing around. Is to match the the size of the grills and the transom above, right? So it looks like it would be very similar to this size. Hmm. Yeah, my preference would be, particularly since it's right across the street from the Dickinson, to keep it this as period as possible. And like I said, like I think the big windows for Hope and Feathers, I think is it has a utilitarian purpose for Hope and Feathers, because they have paintings on display and, you know, it helps, it helps them market themselves. But for uh, um, stakeholders capital, I don't think having a large plate window is, is going to help them market themselves. My no, and it's actually uh, speaking as a client, uh, which typically one doesn't in these meetings, but yeah. I can say that it's, uh, I would feel less comfortable meeting in there with uh, full display so to speak I do under that. so i i think uh, uh but but uh, uh steve i i think uh, if 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 the rest of us uh, were neutral uh, then the then you then you run the show uh, because you have an opinion so i, I <laughs> that's a dangerous no, that's the way it, that's the way it should be i think <laughs> we're, we're a we're a consent we're a consensus operation and so um if everybody is neutral and and you're not then your your view is the consensus becomes must become the consensus view i'm happy with that i'm happy with it I guess, Steve, would you propose the eight over three or eight over four? So, you know, they're proposing. Oh, I, that, that I don't care about. Um, I would just like to keep the grid pattern because I just think it's more unique and, and more period. So I can make a motion to approve the window being changed as long as uh, in a grid pattern, whether eight over three or eight over four 
is up to them. Mm -hmm. I think it's a charming building too, and that yeah, adds it is. charm. Yeah. And I'm really, I'm really glad they're keeping the top. Mm -hmm. the top mm. And then clarifying or looking that it does say that it'll remain black. Mm -hmm. Yes. They came to us a couple of years ago for the side windows. I remember. Mm. Oh. I might not have been here, perhaps. So Steve, did, was that your motion? The, that was my motion. It kind of came and went. <laughs> Do we have I'll a second, second? I'll second that. Okay, we'll second <laughs> it. Oh, uh, is there any further discussion? Anyone want to add anything? If not, let's vote again. We'll start with Greta this time. I agree. Nancy? I approve. Steve? Yes. Nicole? I agree. Bruce? Yes. And I am also a yes. So the motion passes as Bruce, as Steve uh, pronounced it. Oh, it's now, Nate, what happens now? Well, now, so now, yeah, we concluded the public hearings. And then on the agenda, there was, you know, the third item was discussion of the expansion of the local historic district in the town center. So you know, we have that discussion and then really that's the uh, the last agenda item, unless there's any other public comment or unanticipated uh, items to discuss. So nobody in the attendees, know. which is, no one's uh, in attendees right now. Yeah. I mean, Hilda usually comes, um, but she's not here. So. Are so, you really going to go? Are you really leaving? I don't know what we'll do with <laughs> you have all the expertise. Well, it's it's a rolling ball. This, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but but um, uh, I know that uh, joining the planning board, uh, my family would prefer that I. I no, it's uh, totally understandable. You're just yeah. so essential. Uh, right. You're well, so essential. the idea is that uh, that uh, more than the idea, the kind of the requirement is that some other architect. Uh, uh, replaces me and I we haven't been able to find somebody who's willing to do that yeah yeah and, we uh, yeah after that outreach so yeah, I guess Bruce your term expires at the end of June right I guess you would have a few more something months. like that yes yeah. yeah but you could resign before that yeah so we no I, I don't need to and I said I would stay until we found somebody and I haven't uh, we haven't been too active and then of course Ben went and you're overloaded with the, all these other things with now having two staff who've uh, recently departed. So, so I'm, I'm not going to, um, I, I'm here for, I, I'm here, for, I'm, I'm here for the, the, the near term. Good. I, uh, Good. I'll, I'll keep trying to find somebody and I hope others will as well. If you yeah, no, know we anybody. Reached out, the town reached out, um, Ben did a while ago. And the difficulty is sometimes if you're a practicing architect, if you do work in the local historic district, it's can be tough because of- I know, it's, it's interest, why I, so. I asked Chris Riddle because uh, I thought I could twist Chris's arm, but um, but Chris is, uh, Deanne is, I mean, is, 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 he's he's got more serious uh, family um, demands, I think uh, he's heading into than I do. So he he's made hmm. a, a resolution which might have been last year's New Year's resolution rather than this current one to uh, not to uh, not allow himself to be dragged into too much stuff for the moment. And uh, I, 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 I don't know where John Kuhn uh, okay. is. John's retired, but uh, he's, he would be a very good choice if he would be willing, but I, I, I haven't asked him yet. Rita, which island are you on? I'm just curious. I mean, uh, Karen, oh, which island? I wish it were me. <laughs> I just had a picture for you. There. I'm, I'm, on Maui. I'm on Maui. I'm on Maui. And I've oh, never nice. been here so long, but it's so oh, nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. Maui's great. great. So um, jumping into my portion of this, um, in terms of expertise, I actually recruited Elizabeth Sharp to submit a um, CF, what's a CFO? Is that what it's called? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, close. Two of three. And she would be. Yeah, I hope we can get her on as quickly as possible. I don't know if you, uh, she literally wrote the book Amherst A to Z. Oh. Uh, yeah, and she's also the co-head of historic Am of historic Northampton. So she would be terrific. And 
she's all in favor of trying to expand the LHD um, downtown. So I hope we can, you know, expedite that uh, as quickly as possible. Do you know when's the next round or? No, uh, we're trying to schedule interviews. Um, we, we try to do it um, in December and then with the holidays, it was pushed back. I know the town manager's office had been reaching out to applicants for a number of boards and committees. So I know this was one, historical commission was one, housing trust and others. So I did see Elizabeth's name. Actually, I when I staffed the commission, historical commission years ago, she was a member. So I, I do know her. Oh, great. Yeah, she would be great. And I would actually, if we decide to proceed with trying to have an extension, she would be invaluable. And I've you know, written back and forth and uh, I would love to have her uh, her help. Anyway, uh, the go on with my, the you know, last time I talked to you guys, I dropped like a bombshell. And, you know, um, I just wanted to make sure that everyone's in favor of moving forward in some way. Um, I met with uh, Pam Rooney and Susanna Fabing um, last month to talk to them about what kind of incentives we might be able to offer developers, you know, so they would, you know, countenance having, you know, this extension of an LHD. And one of the things I bounced to them I'm having a really hard time uniting the extension with the RG and the BL. Uh, I keep, you know, I'm all, I'm all, in, you know, it's really hard for me to try to impose something on other people's property. And um, if it's a, if it, if it's business, you know, I, I feel for some reason, and maybe I'm just, you know, uh, playing. It's just me, but. If it's business, I don't have as much problem if it's than if it's residential. And um, you know, at one point I discussed with Pam and Susanna, what if like, you know, the RGs became a BL and they said, no, don't go there. That would open up a big Pandora's box. So I don't feel, you know, and Brent B Brager said that the, it, those properties are not threatened now. They're kind of stuck in amber because of the um, dimensional requirements for an RG, I guess. So what I was thinking of was, was trying to pursue um, just a business, a BL LHD, which would only be nine properties. Uh, I would exclude St. Bridget's Church and the Rectory, which is 122 North Pleasant Street, just because I don't think that that's gonna be, a pro I don't think that's gonna be an issue. And I really don't wanna get involved with the Catholic Church and the diocese or whatever. Uh, so it would go from 170 uh, North Pleasant Street, which is Brewer's Bagels, to 284 North Pleasant Street, which is formerly was the Kestrel Land Trust Office. And I think those are all the BL properties. Is that correct, uh, Nate? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, it, the easiest one would then to say, um, so just for those looking at the map, you know, here, this is the zoning map. The BL is the red cross hatch and then the black outline is the local historic district. The red, uh, the pink or red is the general business and the yellow is the general residence zoning district. So I think it would also could include this, um, Steve, just to make clear, I think it could also include the few properties that are off of- yeah, On Halleck? Yeah, on Halleck and McClellan. Yeah. So just these other- Yeah, things. okay. Yeah. So that would bring it up to, I mean, one of them, Bru you know, Brugger's Bagel. Anyway, they're all the same vintage. They're all around 1850s and- um, Right. So my looks... pitch would be that, you know, downtown is different. Let's keep it that way. But meaning that downtown is different and that it downtown is everybody's downtown. And we keep talking about destination Amherst. And to me, what makes, you know, place a destination is if it ha offers something unique and different. So let's keep our downtown different. So uh, I also think that it's more manageable and we won't have as much pushback if we do the RGs. And like I said, if it Later on, if the RGs become an issue, we could take that on, but I think this would be more manageable and more sellable. And the real issue, most of the research is already done. You know, most of these already, all these houses are on macros already. And Susanna and if we, and, and Elizabeth will help even if she isn't on the board and we could put together, you know, to do the research very, very quickly. The real thing would be, and this is where, I'm so glad that Nate is on board now, uh, is coming up with incentives in conjunction with other bodies of you know, Amherst to try to unlock these areas to keep, so these old structures, you know, 
remain and they build in the back like that one structure I showed you that Amherst, um, I actually, that Amherst College did on the other end, uh, which uh, Bruce calls the, um, the Peter Pan building. I actually, I sent some more photographs to Ben after our last meeting. I don't know if he posted them or not of that building so you could get a um, kind of an idea of what I'm talking about. So and anyway, that, um, oh, and then also I would like, uh, Nate, well, first of all, Nate, we need your expertise in terms of trying to come up with incentives. Uh, so, you know, I hope you'll think about that for our next meeting, because that's really beyond what I am capable of doing. Sure. So I think, you know, for the committee, so, you know, I outlined in red and the map what, you know, what would be the study area essentially now. Um, and so, you know, there, Mass the Massachusetts Historical Commission outlines a process, you know, for, um, you know, an expansion or a new district. And so really the, in the past, Amherst has gone with a study committee or it could be actually the local historic district commission can be also the study committee, but then there's a formal process to follow where you inventory the properties, you do an outreach process, you notify property owners, you have to hold required public meetings, you submit a report to Mass Historic. And so I guess some of it would be, you know, is the commission willing to undertake some of that or would you want to have a separate study committee do that? And so, um, you know, I think that's some of the logistics of having this happen, you know, is- Nay, would we need to have the town council approve a new study committee? Um, it, yeah, or the town manager, I don't, I don't know what, which- I'd rather but, not have to go that, I mean, I'm, everyone jump in, but I'd rather not go that route. And if we could just do it internally, I think that's the better way to go. Okay. If you guys want to proceed, you know, I that uh, and you want to proceed under the parameters that I just mentioned. Um, let's uh, see. This is yes. I'm not muted. Um, just let me to understand this. Uh, the, Nate has put a red, a thick red line around the uh, limited business uh, area or properties that you're proposing as the limit of the expansion. But do I understand correctly then that there are properties to the west of that, uh, that um, uh, basically one side or other of Halleck Street plus a couple on um, Coles Lane, these ones, they are, they are they are still outside of the uh, district. So basically, we would have uh, that area in blue, which is um, not in the district. Is that correct? Yeah, I, yeah, you are correct. And so yes. my question is, uh, does it would it not? Why wouldn't we? Try and include well the because one of it's the library that that section you're talking about is like the library, the historical society, CVS. I guess would be the parking lot. Then there's really no no is that no no no. This is just properties. Oh, this of, is Prospect you're talking about. This is uh, north of Cole. So this is a single family house right here, and then this is Hallett Court back here. Um, oh, I see. And then these are. Older properties facing Halleck. Yeah. So the, maybe there was a reason why they weren't included initially, which, uh, but, but I would. Uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the, on Halleck, a lot of those properties are like apartment buildings that aren't like historic in any way. And I think at the time when we were doing it, it was, we were dealing with facts on the ground. Yeah. In terms of like, those are all student rentals now and the battle, you know, it's the same reason why we didn't include like Allen Street and Phillips Street. And those streets was that we decided that we had to pick our battles and we wanted yeah. to have property owners that wanted the protections of an LHD. We didn't want to get into a pitch battle with landlords. Um, okay. and, that, and that, as it was, we got a huge LHD. I mean, it's 192 properties. So it actually exceeded, um, I mean, that's a very, that's a pretty darn large LHD. Yeah. I mean, the Dick, the Dickinson's uh, how many properties? Like twenty something? I think it's, I think it's forty, but it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, so, I think yeah. And so Massachusetts Historical Commission, you know, in their guidance documents, will um, recommend following certain features for a boundary, right? So if you look on North Prospect Street, 
we could say, well, let's just go up North Prospect Street, but really we went to the one properties to the east. And that's why, you know, or essentially one that it looks like an irregular boundary, but really, yeah, you know, it's, we didn't go down the center line because that side of the street can impact what the other side looks like. And so, yeah. you know, at some point you have to just say that's the boundary, right? You can, you know, yeah. how much. I mean, well, I, I understand. I, yeah, uh, I understand I Steve's reply. Yeah. Which is the, also the, the stuff in the blue. I'm, I'm sorry to keep talking over yeah. you, Bruce. Go ahead. Well, what I what I understood you to say, Steve, that the stuff in the blue is um, has got uh, a client uh, owners and who care less, and b properties that are um, how do you say this uh, are the least um, deserving, the least uh, demanding. Uh, from a public point of view of uh, of of preservation, yeah, I, I haven't I, said I, that I, right, but it'd be nice to be able to say it uh, better. No, than I, I know things. where you're coming from. I mean, some yeah, of those. So, so that's the reason why you're. Yeah. Because the first thing that occurs when someone looks at this is, well, there's this funny, um, this funny undeclared, you know, kind of uh, uh, landlocked zone that uh, we're not doing and. Why? Why is that? And then you answered the question. Is, well, uh, no, I mean, there's another, there's a simpler answer than that. The blue are not, is not a business district. Why well, everything in the red is a BL. Yeah. And basically, we're trying to prevent the archipelization of that part of town because that's where the archipelago buildings are now are dead zones. Why those buildings in that red zone? There's there's still lots of foot traffic. You know, if you go, Nate, I sent Bren um, one of Maybe you can find it. One of the um, town center limited business zoning district focus area it was a thing map of the overlays, mm -hmm. and it's in the file I sent them. And if you go to page, I don't know what page, but you can literally see one of one of the overlays that have been proposed um, on the corner of Halleck Street, and it's another archipelago building. It's it's just I mean you can actually see the drawing of it among the materials that I have put for everyone's, you know, inspection, you know, what an overlay would mean. So anyway, I, what I'm trying to come up with is what is the, so this is the trying high, to come up with, trying to come high up with value, uh, yeah. this is the yeah. high value uh, frontage properties that, uh, so I no, I, I, I think others will ask the question and it's good to be able to answer it. And uh, the answer is um, some uh, brief and, marginally sanitized version of what we were trying to say. So I, I'm comfortable, uh, you know, proceeding without trying to include that because okay. for, the, for those reasons. Yep. So, uh, uh, I, I'm just wondering, I'm Steve, I'm wondering, could Archipelago come in and say, we want to, could they buy those low apartments and build tall apartment buildings there? Do we need to protect against that possibility? You know, I think what what Pam, what they told me is the opposite, you know, other side of the street is, I guess, BG. Uh, so it's zoned differently than the red zone, which is BL. So no, I think the way it is now, they can't. And Nate, you just correct me. Like I said, I'm an English major. So this is, you know, so over my, I'm not, not even an English major. I'm a semiotics major. So this is so over my head. Uh, anyway, I think the other side of the street is BG, which allows lar much larger buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. The overlays, basically, I think, because I, I was asking Pam and Susanna to explain it to me, overlays are site-specific. And when they do an overlay is approved, I think dimensional requirements can go out the window, as opposed like a, with the garage that is being proposed. Um, what this does, this is the only way to prevent those buildings from being protected and not being knocked down. This, you know, I was on the historical commission and the base, the most they can do is a one year demolition delay. This would ensure that those old 1850 buildings, you know, will remain preserved. And then Pam Rooney and Susanna came up with that, those brilliant handouts, which I distributed to you guys, showing how development could work. And if we could get, you know, someone like Nate, who actually knows you know, the details, if we could come up with a way to provide incentives, you know, and work, you know, you know, with the 
owners, and the owners are basically Kurt Shumway and Barry Roberts, and they're Amherst, but you know, we could hopefully appeal to them. But for me, what makes me more comfortable is once again, that this is, let's keep downtown different. You know, let's tie it into destination Amherst. And downtown is different because downtown, you know, really belongs not just to the people that own it, but to everyone who lives in town and frequents it. So Steve, are you proposing a new district, right? Not an expansion. So this would be a new district. Yeah, I would like to call it like the um, the BL district, the business, the, the business district. So it has a, a, a theme that ties it together. So it could be the 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 uh, North Pleasant Street business historic district. Yeah, so yes. It's good to have a street name or something. I mean, that's yeah, absolutely. Got Dickinson, we've got Sunset, we've yeah, got Lincoln. So, so anyway, just think like about it, you guys. North Pleasant I mean, is, of, the, yeah. uh, is the long yeah. axis there. Yeah. So the so, North Pleasant business just. Was, so yeah. Steve, I think that this is really absolutely the way we should go. And I think we should go as fast as possible. Um, all those reasons that you said that this is a uh, destination Amherst, that it is different, that it's worth preserving, but that something has to happen there that we can't just leave it as Bruce said, as he walked down this decrepit, why is this so town so decrepit? It, it, it does have to change. And the uh, proposition, I, I think we should all get on board. Uh, I don't think it's that hard to sell, to say that we want development, but we want development, which is going to really make it, keep it a destination worthy of uh, being Emily Dickinson's um, home and being unique in the whole world. And um, what you're saying, Steve, is that it would go faster if it was an internal uh, commission composed of, of the members of this commission than if we try to get another one approved. Um, is that what, what you said? Well, being married to a council, uh, <laughs> council member, I'm not convinced that it would get approved by the present composition of this council. Yes, and I so, agree, uh, I think it would yeah. hold it up. It would definitely hold it up. So um, it would be nice if we had, you know, Elizabeth as part of this commission and she would be great on the study group. I think you would be great on the study group. I think she would be great on the study group. Greta would be great. I think we should go full forces and try to sell this. Well, the guy who's key is Mr. Malloy here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, um, I'd also, you know, yeah, so I think we'd set out, so like I said, the process would be, the commission can then vote itself a study committee, or I'm not even sure you have to really vote, I, I, I'd have to look into that. Um, and then, um, you know, we'd start studying the boundaries, we'd have to determine why that boundary, why not say two prop, why are we ending where we are, why not go north or west or east, and so uh, Steve looks like you've, you know, thought about that, so I think that's something, you know, we have to answer, so you know, we prepare a preliminary study report that goes to Mass Historic uh, and to the town. Um, and, you know, really it's an inventory form for each property. And then there's a narrative that needs to be written uh, with some justifications for certain things. And then this is a pretty small district. Uh, so then it could happen pretty quickly. And then, you know, Mass Historic reviews it and asks for some feedback. We do have to get buy-in from the property owners. Typically, if half the property owners um, dispute a district mass historic recommends that the town you know change its thinking or something so I, I do agree that between Barry Roberts and Kurt Shumway they probably own I don't know 80 percent of the properties there um I think Kurt owns that whole Brugger's block yeah he might he might own all, yeah, he might he owns all the whole thing so, you know yeah. it could be worthwhile to me um with Kurt and Barry uh too as this gets forming so um, well, Nay, what we need from you, though, is we need, I'd love to meet with them, and I, don't, we, I, I just don't have the expertise to say, if you would be amenable to this, we would go to the ZBA or to the planning board and propose this in terms of helping you develop, you know, behind those buildings. I just don't know what to offer them, and I actually asked Pam and Susanna, and they didn't know either. Well, I, I think uh, 
um, and each employer is not not those two boards that you mentioned, Steve. It's um, I guess ultimately it's Barry and uh, uh, not Barry. That's he's long gone. Uh, Paul and and, uh, and 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 more directly uh, Christine. So I guess if the if the town is prepared to uh, commit a certain amount of time for Nate to do that, then he can do it. But it's it's not his decision, obviously. Yeah. Um, I I think that what Nate suggested is the structure that we need to do. I'm going to be less good at this uh, because I'm not in the area and I haven't done a lot of this. But what I can do is I'm I can um, I'm certainly willing to participate in meetings. Uh, I mean, I know Barry pretty well. I don't know Kurt so well, but you know, I understand a little bit about how these guys think and operate. And so, if we were planning to meet with them, uh, we could talk together. Um, and uh, well, I guess we have to make sure it's we can do it together. I guess Nate, you and Steve, and I could meet, or you and Steve and. And I think Aaron, the, two of, or, the two of you could meet with me and, you know, it's yeah. not. So any two of us plus you is a meeting that can happen without, uh, um, uh, and, and, and with Pam, no, what's the, uh, the person's name who we're contemplating inviting to join the commission? Oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. So before Elizabeth joins, uh, she is not bound by the, uh, public uh, so if she was intent on oh, okay. joining, that's a good interesting idea if she was intent on, and she was agreeable to joining it might be prudent and i don't know whether i'm just being you know, my usual smart ass type character who's probably ought to be spanked but uh, but it seems to me that it might be good to have some meetings that would involve you and she and nate and one of the rest of us so that you could uh, meet much more simply um, uh, to get some structure some thinking lined out before she actually becomes uh, part of the uh, constraint uh, constrained by the open meeting law yeah, well, I mean, the open meeting law is there for a reason i don't want to dispute it but it, but when you're trying to strategize and just think things through and brainstorm and stuff it's it's just a lot easier to do it um, casually um, in the way we used to do these things so right. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I, you know, so like, for instance, if Steve, me and Bruce met, that's just an ad hoc meeting. We're not like a subcommittee mm -hmm. or anything. So to me, yeah. that's fine. We can report back to the committee, full commission on what's happening. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I, yeah, to your point, I'd have to, I'd have to talk to other staff, but what is the incentive? I mean, I think we want to right, keep foot traffic. We want to keep businesses downtown. We're going to keep, you know, keep it vibrant. And so, you know, I think there is, Going to be some you know different opinions on what that means is it uh renovating and reviving those old buildings is it all new construction and so that's not you know that becomes a a big discussion i think what happened when the other year when the town staff was planning some bl zoning overlay uh you know and it's going to happen again when we we're hoping to get this uh, request for a proposal out for downtown design standards it opens up the question about what is downtown and what are the boundaries and it's a discussion the town hasn't had in a while and so I think it, you know, whether it's the downtown design standards, whether it's this proposal for a local historic district, I think it's just going to get everyone talking about, you know, what is appropriate development downtown. And I don't know if that's, that hasn't happened in a while. And so, um, well, this is a good way to start it then. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, it's up for the people of Amherst to decide what kind of town they want. Right. But, um, in, but at least this would give them, you know, an option. Right. No, I'm, yeah, I'm saying that yeah. because although yeah, you might consider it an easy process. It's not a lot of properties. You know, we could get the forms and the narrative done. It may just be that it becomes, you know, a much bigger discussion in the community. You know, right, right. It might just be that because we do have. What to do you guys, uh, the silent ones, Nancy and Heather? What do you guys? I mean, we'd all have to. We're going to get a lot of pushback on this, so just want everyone. To, to be aware of that and you know um what, what's your feelings on this i think it's a good idea if, I, I like the idea of your meeting with them and trying to hear what their concerns are and and help them understand what we were thinking of you know and what we're not thinking of so that they don't worry about that we're not going to let them do anything with those properties but uh, trying to guide them to see what is possible 
uh, showing them what Amherst College is doing, et cetera, et cetera. So I mean, and Amherst has a couple of different properties that they've done that with now. So some good examples of what can happen without completely changing the, the, the character of the building. But Heather, what do you, how do you feel about it? Uh, Nicole, but um, hey, Nicole. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I can see, you know what, if I had better glass, I'm going to my eye doctor tomorrow and I'll get that. <laughs> so I'm using my iPad so I can, I can't see the names. So sorry. Nicole. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one, I mean, what I've been listening to, and obviously I wasn't involved with the previous um, development, but having it be a business district and something totally separate makes sense. But yeah, just having that um, meeting with them ahead of time, again, just to see what kind of support <laughs> there is or what you know might be needed before all the time and energy gets put into writing up and um, writing up the report and all of that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Okay. So Nate, yeah. you need to tell me what the next move. We're, so I, I think we're vote, are we agreeing that we're going to maybe include those two properties on Halleck, which are the same vintage, uh, and they're all owned by Kurt Shumway. So you'll be thrilled about that. Add those properties and then try these it would be eleven properties. Is that what we're going to try to roughly move ahead with? Yeah, it sounds like, like 11 or 12 properties. And so it could just be contacting the owners and having them meet uh, in town hall with the one or two of you and staff. And just, you know, that could be a, the next um, the next point. The other one would be, I'll, I'll send out the Massachusetts um, Historical Commission guidebook. And so I think everyone can read that. So I do think, I want just to make sure we're following the process correctly. So yeah, no, I posted that, it's already posted on, you know, we. We can't use Dropbox anymore, Jenny says, because it's we're now a town council and subject to state laws. Is that why we can't use Dropbox? Yeah, you know, I didn't, I haven't. So, so previously we had used Dropbox or an online sharing platform uh, with a caveat that we can't have these online conversations, right? So we can't be sharing documents or somehow having conversations without outside the public meeting and. Now, last time we had a study committee and other committees, we were able to use Dropbox or some file sharing software. And more recently, we've been told we can. I haven't, I, I want to look into it a little bit more, Steve. So I, you know, um, you know, it's not- Because I like, put all this, I've, I've listed, I, I put yeah. every, I put the overlays in it. I sent it to Ben. I sent him photographs of all the houses. I fixed the one that was a mistake. Uh, the guidebook's there. It's all, it's already there. So right. I just don't know how to access it. Yeah, so I don't know that it's, yeah, I, I, I'll talk to the town clerk. I mean, they, they can help clarify. I'm not sure that it's necessarily a violation. I think there's concern that it could become one. And so out of caution, they recommend not doing it. And so I'm not sure we can. I, I just, I have to confirm that. I just. I it's just so much easier. It makes, I could like show everything on my own. And it so could be that, community. you know, maybe the concern is that it's not a public folder and maybe we just make it a public folder and that way it, you know, then that eliminates any concern, right? So before it was a Dropbox folder, only the committee could access, but maybe it becomes like a public packet essentially that is up there and anyone can look at it any time and that might eliminate the- Yeah, that's what I would like. Yep. And they, right. I, before we meet with Kurt and and Barry, I'd like to meet with you and, and Bruce or whoever, sure. want, you know, to come up with some ideas of what we could offer them. Because yes, we're just gonna- Yeah, yeah I agree. I think we've, uh, you've got to put yourself in the position of these, these uh, uh, two, uh, uh, Barry and Kurt and anyone else, if, there's a, if there is a third or multiple part, more, more parties than two, and say, why, why should they care? Uh, because the easiest thing for Barry and Kurt to do is say, well, I'm happy with the way things are. Um, if we can explain what they're, uh, well, we, we, should, we should be able to explain why we're doing it from our point of view. We want to do this because, um, but it helps then if we can also say, and you want to do this, or we hope you would want to do this, or we think you would want to do this uh, for these reasons as well. So we can argue it from their point of view. If there's no argument from, if there's no benefit that they accrue from this, and it's uh, then it, then it's, uh, then we have to, 
prevail in a political power play, right? Mm -hmm. So it would be good to try and uh, identify reasons why they would, uh, why it would be beneficial for the developer. I can't think of those, but Nicole, you probably got some thoughts about this. Um, so, uh, well, Nate, have you but, read the have you read the handout that Susanna and um, Pam Rooney created? I posted that. Too. Yeah, I mean, they did that a while ago, right? It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, so sometimes I think you know, keeping or developing behind the buildings may not be possible, just given the lot sizes or other things. I mean, I think a local historic district doesn't prevent new development; it really shapes it. And so, you know, I think that. Um, even with the design guidelines, downtown design guidelines that the planning department, you know, hopes to get going next, you know, this year, uh, sorry, January, this year, um, you know, it would actually have more, it would have a lot more um, than what does, you know, guide, guidance in the document than the zoning bylaw has now, right? So in terms of architectural details, um, pat window patterns, other things. And so, you know, I think the local historic district has the same principles uh, and it becomes stronger because it, because it's regulatory. And so, you know, for me, it would be about Bill Gillen when he's on the study committee said, well, he looks at it as a recipe that if it's clear, then the architects can follow it. Developers can follow it. And it's really, mm -hmm. you know, it's a tool to help with development or redevelopment. And so, you know, the obstacles might be that are, you know, are we saying that the buildings can't be of a certain size or scale? Um, are we making it more expensive? You know, the flip side could be that we're, you know, the buildings would be more attractive so that it would actually keep, you know, businesses and foot traffic and make it more lively and vibrant and economical. And so, you know, I don't know, you know, we can say this and I'm not sure if there's been any studies done. I can look on the mass planners listserv in a few places to see, um, you know, even Northampton has a district downtown or in a more commercial area, what, you know, what kind of outcomes there are. So I think, um, you know, some of them might be doing a little research to then present to the owners and developers. I mean, honestly, when we've done this in the past or even zoning changes, the developers are often pretty quiet publicly. <laughs> so they're not, we don't hear yeah. from them sometimes, which is kind of funny. Uh, you know, we have reached out and, you know, they might have some ideas, but usually that we don't hear a lot. And so, you know, this will be one of the first times where if we can approach, you know, them directly will be good. I mean, I know Kurt and Barry, um, you know, I think they're really amenable to things. They're, they're like, I think they like to think about how they can, work with the town and the community. And so, you know, when we were, um, for instance, you know, Barry's been moving houses, right? He's opted to move houses to make it work. Uh, Kurt's been really interested in, you know, doing things with shared parking, or he's mentioned it when we were doing the downtown parking working group. And he was one of the few who was like, you know, I'll, I'll be willing to try different strategies. And so I think they're really willing and open to, to yeah. work with the town and community. So. Well, that, that's, uh, as you were saying, what you were saying, to, uh, Ben, uh, uh, Nate, I was thinking, that um, maybe it would be a good uh, plan to meet first with Barry because Barry's, we've had, re this commission has had recent experience with Barry. And one, one line of inquiry would be, well, Barry, uh, do you think that the, um, the, the sunset, uh, the, the development on sunset that, we've, uh, that you've recently uh, undertaken um, do you think we were a constructive presence in that? Um, and uh, I mean, I th I think we were actually. Yeah, Bruce. Um, I th this I beg to differ so, on this one. I th I think we have to come up. We have to talk to people that know and c see if we can come up with some ideas to present them. I was on the historical commission when there was the demolition delay on the Halleck property. You know, um, you know what I'm talking about. It was a co. Um, it was a co. It was a, on the which property? It was Halleck and North. It was a corner of. Uh, it was one in on Halleck, which connected, which was owned by Kurt Shumway, and it connected to a property that abutted um, North Pleasant Street that was owned by Barry, and they came in, mm, and we did. Remember that, uh, um, Nate. You know, I can look up the address. Yeah, yeah, it was on the corner of Halleck and North Pleasant. So it was right near, um, you know, where, um, where, you know, Realignment Park, right at the southern end of Kendrick. Yeah, anyway, they came in and they wanted to knock the building down and they wanted to put, you know, a very generic office building 
in a, a huge office building in its place. And they were, and then we did a one demolition delay and it went away, I guess, because they had, they had one client that wanted to, for the whole building and that client went away and they're still very upset about it. And their attitude was, hey, the guys across the street are making hay, you know, they can do whatever they want. What, why, why can't we? So they were very shaken up by it. And I think they're still very angry about it. And in fact, I know they are. So before, I just know that their, their knee jerk reaction immediately would be, oh man, we can't take these buildings down. We can't develop, but you know, I, I well, think- Steve, you're, to you're, up... you're arguing uh, against the proposition that we should meet with them. Uh, in no, so no, far I think as you're saying that uh, we know what their attitude is going to be. Well, um, I'm just my concern about, is that yeah, uh, yeah, okay. I would say uh, that that what we do know is because they're both in town, people mm -hmm. have been in town for a long time, is that they want to be well received. Um, now, yes, they could have uh, because the example you're citing, and I would uh, argue this if I was in front of Barry right now, mm -hmm. I'd say, well, Barry, Kurt. Um, that 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 example didn't play out. It was it was basically a a, a one game tennis match, and uh, and you, and and the first game you didn't win, but it doesn't mean that you wouldn't win the set or the match if we had played it through. Now we did play through the uh, sunset development with Barry, and there were a couple of points which. Um, uh, I'll, I'll cut to the chase, which is that I generally think that that property is going to be well received. Um, it was supported by this committee, uh, this commission, and, and by other town boards, I suppose, as well. Um, my sense is that the extent that we can get involved in these sensitive areas, the argument, if, if, we can, if we're going to be successful, we have to successfully, I think, make the argument that our involvement is going to be a net benefit that we're going to help the uh, project that uh, manifests out of this one that is more generally uh, acceptable and is going to cause uh, the uh, developer less grief. That would be the if we could convince uh, uh, the property owners of that argument, um, then that would be they would be more likely to want us uh, involved in the process. Bruce, I think the only thing we're talking about now is whether you, Steve and you and Nate should meet first before involving. I think we all agree that we're going to eventually talk to them, but probably for a preliminary to just get clear what, uh, what we could constructively offer. For example, I think in the thing that you sent out, Steve, that Pat Rooney uh, designed um, it was clear that the, these properties are kind of stuck right now because of zoning changes and things like that. We could help further that by being behind, by, by talking to the developers and saying, look, we would go, we'd be willing to help you um, modify this if the whole thing is more in, or, or what do you think about this? So, so you're really suggesting... what you're talking about is meeting before, meeting now to consolidate your your attack plan in a way or your- Yes, or the offer. I mean, uh, if what I understood you to say, I think, but let's uh, see, is uh, you're saying that to the extent that there are zoning inhibitions uh, or there are aspects of the bylaw that are inhibiting those properties, those specific properties in ways that are, perhaps um, detrimental, uh, you're saying that we might be able to argue with them for um, some kind of, um, I don't know whether remission is the word, but some, something that would allow them to do more with that property in exchange for then having us. Yeah, I just want to have my involved. ducks in a row before I, I see them is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. And I just don't know what those ducks are. Like I, I when I met with Pam, I said, Pam, this is great. How do we make this happen? You know, what do, what do, and she goes, I don't know. So yeah. I need someone who knows. The guy who knows is Nate. Well, Pam, I've worked with Nate well, before, I, and Nate yeah. is like amazing. Well, let's, let's hope that's true. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm willing to true. participate, yeah. uh, but, to, but only if you think uh, I'm the best, best one, because um, um, because the moment we have more than the two of us, we have to advertise it. 
No, what I would like to do is have you and me, maybe Elizabeth, meet with Nate and just talk and about Pam, what Pam Rooney is, could come too. Yeah. And what is, yeah, what's possible. You know, as I once wrote to Karen, is like we're a really smart, we're a town of really smart people. So we should be able to do something really creative, you know, between all of us, instead of, you know, just doing what's the most expedient, which is what I, seems to be what we have been doing. Okay, Gene, well, I'm up for that. You. And I also think it, I like the painting, the vision you have of Amherst, of being historical and a destination. And I've noticed that after our last meeting, there were two letters to the editor that mentioned that, that mentioned how much they appreciated the local historic district and the expansion that people I don't even know, but they mentioned that. So I thought to get that vision out there, it is a way of convincing um, Barry and Kurt that that's what Amherst, that that's an advantage for all of Amherst, including major property owners here. So I really like that vision that you put out. Yeah, I agree. I think more than making deals because, I mean, taking the high ground of of having this vision and, and publicizing it so that you have people behind it is a great way to go. Everybody hates those other buildings. But that's what gives us leverage. And that's yeah. so nobody wants more. Of that. Yeah. Well, All right. So, Nate, how do we go about uh, facilitating this meeting with, with the three of us and maybe someone else? Yeah. I mean, I can send an email out this week and just find times in the next few two weeks and we can meet. That's you know, okay. And then I, I'll send the committee. I know you post this, but I can just send a link. The Mass Historic had revised the guidelines okay. for establishing local historic districts. I can just email everyone. Yeah, that's probably been updated since the one yeah. I posted. Yeah. I think okay. they updated it, yeah, in November of 21, I thought, or pretty recently. I thought they were trying to finish an update. Maybe they had done it more, even more recently. Yeah, mine was like well before that. Okay. Yeah. All right. That sounds okay. good. And plan. So, um, Nate, then before we close the meeting, do we want to um, put on the agenda next for next time uh, election of officers? I think we should. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know for everyone, you can you know feel free to research local historic districts and benefits to local economy. I mean, anyone can forward I mean, uh, art articles, books, whatever around. That's not a violation of the meeting law. I mean, I'd recommend going through me, but you know, if you see a great article in some magazine, you can, you know, or online you, publication, you can send it out. That's fine. It's really the problem is if you start if we start emailing back and forth, discussing that and why, how it's relevant to Amherst, then all of a sudden that's a discussion that should be happening in the public meeting. Um, but sharing information is not a violation. Um, yeah. So I think election of officers is good to have. I mean, I will say there's been some pending applications which may which will require a public hearing. So um, um, uh, there's a proposed demolition of a garage on Fearing Street, uh, installation of a car charging station on one on McClellan, um, maybe a demolition of another garage. So there's a few, you know, possible applications that have come through the commission that would need a public hearing in the next month. And so we could say we'll meet in four weeks, but I may need to email everyone to ask that we meet sooner, depending on or late, you know, depending on when these come in, I try to coordinate. So we try to have a hearing and capture as many as we can. Um, everyone's been really slow to get information to me. So some of the, some of these have already been, the applications were started weeks ago and they just won't, they haven't been completed. And so they just, you know, so I know they're coming. Yeah, I think that sounds good. So should we schedule having a meeting one month from now, which would be, um, it's February, February 7th. Is that, does that work February for February 7th at three o'clock? Um, that we schedule it for then aside and you ask us to meet earlier and then we find a time. I think the seventh would work actually because we need a two week notice. So even if we have it on the seventh, it may end up being like a week later, just so if we can get enough here, you know. I'd rather get all the applications done and not try to hold another hearing after for just one application. So, yeah. I should say that uh, the reason we're meeting on a Tuesday is because New Year's Day was uh, right. The so Monday maybe. was the holiday. We typically uh, meet on a Monday, uh, right. but we're a bunch of new folks. So I'm I'm 
I'm okay with Tuesday, but uh, I just remind us that Monday has typically been our day. Right. That particular week, Monday the 6th, would work better for me. All right. You can say Monday the 6th. for me. All right. Monday does the 6th. That, does that give us enough time, uh, Nate? Yeah. I mean, if we needed to, I can try to get, like I said, if those applications come in, we would need, I, I would need them coming in the next two weeks, but hopefully they can, if they don't, then they, you know, we just, I'd let them know that they're, you know, it just would be a, another, a later time for them. Okay. So we'll say February 6th mm -hmm. at three o'clock. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else we need to discuss at this meeting before? Are there any comments anyone wants to put uh, forth? Then. Thank you for not, all your to, to everybody, <laughs> Steve. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. We're so chair. happy to have you. Thank you so much for helping the group as always. And uh, we don't have to have a roll call. We just say. Yeah, if everyone agrees, we can just say it's adjourned. Yeah. Hey, you vote Have by pushing the red button. Start of the new year. Yeah. Yes. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Lucky you. Bye. Thank you.